cumulative spot Bitcoin ETF flows have now surpassed $54 billion. And across all ETFs worldwide, they now hold over 1.4 million BTC, which is more than 7% of the total supply that will ever exist. So if you're ignoring ETF data, then you're missing a huge piece of the overall puzzle. So in today's video, I'm going to be diving into all of this ETF data and walking you through some of my custom metrics that I've created to help cut through the noise and make sense of everything that's going on. And the final metric is one of my favourite metrics I've created in a while. So let's get into it. First up, let's take a quick look at my ETF dashboard. So I designed this to get a quick overview of the health of this section of the market and how it's developing over time. What we can see is that the total Bitcoin holdings of all ETF products has now passed 1.4 million BTC, which is over 7% of the total supply that will ever exist. And if we take into account the fact that a large portion of Bitcoin is permanently lost, that figure could actually be well over 10% of the effective circulating supply. Now looking at this quarter alone, which isn't even over yet, the ETFs have taken over 91,000 Bitcoin off the market. That's already a very strong quarter, only beaten by the initial wave of inflows at the ETF launch and the post-election rally in the back end of last year. And when we focus on the monthly changes, we can see a consistent trend. Since the beginning of May this year, the ETFs have steadily been taking more and more Bitcoin off the market, with August alone removing 41,000 coins from the supply as it currently stands. Now, for context, there is currently about 450 new Bitcoin being mined per day and introduced into circulation. So that's about 14,000 or so per month since the most recent halving event. So this passive flow from the ETFs alone this month has soaked up over three times the supply being introduced into the system, and we're not even finished with the month yet. And when we look across the history of this since their inception, the majority of months have been positive, with the scale of those inflows far outweighing those relatively few negative months. Now, let's take a look at some of my charts to see if we can gather any useful information out of this data. First up, looking at the cumulative ETF flows, we can see that since they were first launched in January 2024, we've now reached a net figure of $54 billion of inflows into these ETFs. And it's pretty much been a one-way direction of up and to the right, apart from a brief dip earlier this year. Overall, there's a staggering amount of passive capital that's flowing into these products and removing supply off the market every single day. Now, if we analyse these flows in a bit more detail by looking at the daily ETF flows, which measures the amount of capital flowing in and out of these products on a daily basis, then we can see that we've had a few days of reasonably large outflows. Overall, the ETF flows generally tend to mirror Bitcoin's price action, and that makes sense because the bulk of the ETF demand comes from retail investors. And as we know, retail typically chases the highs and panics during the lows. And this becomes even more obvious when we look at the largest spikes. The biggest outflow we've seen was in February of this year, coinciding with a big correction in Bitcoin's price from about $100,000 down to $83,000. And on the flip side, the largest inflow came in November last year, when Bitcoin rallied from around $70,000 up to $90,000 post-election. These flows are a fascinating way to see human psychology playing out in real time. And if you bought on those red outflow days, then scaled back purchases on the huge green inflow days, you'd have avoided a lot of the emotional pitfalls that come with investing in Bitcoin. Now, let's move on to one of my favourite new metrics, which I'm calling the cumulative flow delta. It's relatively simple, but really insightful. It's basically designed to show the deviations of ETF flows from their trend. It carries forward values over weekends, since the ETFs don't trade then, and then applies a moving average over a chosen period. I've chosen to use a 75-day average because it produced the clearest signals without too much noise. The oscillator is then calculated as the difference between these daily flows and this moving average, which highlights periods of accelerating or decelerating net flows. Essentially, it tracks how the ETF flows are moving day to day compared to their average trend, and the data starts around March of last year, which is about 75 days after their launch. And what we can see is that whenever the delta has gone above plus 8, it's marked local highs where net inflows were way above their statistical norm. On the flip side, when the oscillator is at break-even or even below zero, it's marked times where ETF flows were well below their norm, which has coincided with local bottoms in price. This is really just about measuring what the mass retail crowd are doing 
and then considering how to act in the opposite way. At the moment, the trend is clearly decreasing as ETF flows have slumped with the recent price correction. But if we move back down to that lower baseline, it could mark another great buying opportunity. But remember, this is a very new metric, so it's one just to keep monitoring as the data comes in. Another angle I've been looking at is the volatility of ETF flows. This metric shows how sudden and extreme the flows are compared to their historical average. And when the chart starts to turn red, it highlights times when ETF flows were highly volatile, and that almost always coincided with a major move in Bitcoin's price, either up or down. It's a useful one to track when you suspect the market is moving a bit too dramatically for your liking and you want some visual confirmation. Interestingly, despite all this bearish sentiment I'm seeing across Twitter or X during this correction, the volatility reading has been fairly low. And that actually makes sense, because a steady $10,000 drop from the all-time high at today's price levels really isn't that big of a move anymore. Five years ago, that would have been a huge crash, but now it's just part of normal volatility. Now finally, I want to introduce you to a really interesting new metric that's still experimental and you absolutely won't find this anywhere else. It's called the Flow Weighted Average Price, or the FWAP for short. This one is fascinating because essentially it shows Bitcoin's price, but weighted by how much money is flowing in or out the ETFs each day. Technically speaking, it aligns the daily ETF flow data with the calendar, skipping the weekends, and then calculating a decaying cumulative sum of both price time flows and the flows themselves, using a decay factor to weight recent activity more heavily. Now, for those that didn't follow all of that, it simply represents the effective price level where the ETFs have been accumulating or distributing their Bitcoin. You can think of it as my ETF version of Bitcoin's famous realized price, and it's my way to estimate the cost basis of ETF buyers, where more recent flows carry the most weight. This is without a doubt one of my favorite metrics that I built recently, and it behaves very similarly to the well-known short-term holder realized price, which is one of the most powerful tools in Bitcoin on-chain analysis. I'm essentially treating this as the most important price level for the average ETF holder. And that's important because whenever the average ETF investor is sitting on a solid profit or a significant loss, History has shown us that time and time again, they tend to act in the opposite way that they should. And what's interesting right now is that the current FWAP sits at around $105,000, which is remarkably close to the short-term holder realized price, and I'm not surprised by that. Now, I'm still developing this metric out further, and I think it has a huge potential for new derivatives and other related indicators. But even in its current form, it's already given us some very telling signals for when Bitcoin is trading above or below this ETF focused price. I really believe this one could be a powerful tool to monitor going forward. And for my premium members on Substack, I'll be making these metrics available once they're fully built out, so stay tuned for that. So, looking at the ETF flows more broadly, they're rapidly absorbing the available Bitcoin supply, which is incredibly bullish in the long term. And what surprised me is that when you break down this data properly, it actually produces some very strong signals that can directly help guide us in our Bitcoin accumulation journey. So, to wrap things up, what we're clearly seeing here is that the ETFs are quietly soaking up an enormous amount of the available supply. They've already pulled more than 1.4 million Bitcoin off the market, and just this month alone, they've absorbed more than three times the number of coins being mined. That's a huge shift in the supply dynamics, and it's something you simply can't ignore if you're serious about understanding this market. At the same time, the flow data tells us a lot about human behaviour. We can see clear patterns where money pours in during rallies and then gets pulled out during corrections. It's just another reminder that retail investors tend to do the opposite of what's smart, chasing highs and panicking during lows. So watching these flows play out in real time is like having a direct line into market psychology. And when I've dug deeper into these new metrics, like the flow delta, the volatility, and the flow weighted average price, the picture gets even clearer. They're giving us signals about when flows are running too hot, when things are cooling off, and even where the likely average ETF holder's cost basis sits. Right now, those metrics are pointing towards a weakening demand during this correction, and if they keep resetting lower, that could set the stage for another really strong buying opportunity. So while the headline story is bullish long-term absorption, the real value comes from breaking down the data and using these tools to guide your own accumulation strategy. If you're serious about Bitcoin analysis, my full custom indicator suite is now live. Built for investors looking to gain an edge through deep cycle signals and advanced on-chain insights.
It's available now through the link in the description where you'll also find my free newsletter. And if you found this valuable, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. And I'll see you all in the next one.